Third week of June 2020, we've got the Lidl Insect Killer uh, on sale in Lidl for $7.99. So, wife was going down there. I said, why don't you get one? And the first thing I, I um, didn't expect was the overall size of this thing. It's probably at least a, a foot by 7 inches by 5 inches, 4 inches. So it's quite big. What does it say? I just thought, because I'm interested in insect killers because... Um, one of my videos I did on the eff efficacy of a particular mosquito catcher that's billed as catching and killing mosquitoes was a complete spoof and millions of them being sold and I thought well I'll just have a look at this one because I need one for my workshop anyway. Um, so it's 4.7 watts, fully insulated housing with protective mesh, no chemicals. Keeps bug at bay both day and night. So I wonder, you know, in the bright sunny daylight, whether an insect will still go towards the um, uh, near UV fluorescent output from this thing. Only suitable for indoor use. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get it out of the box and find something to cut. The uh... yeah, so a large thing for seven pounds ninety nine, including the old dreaded VAT. Okay. As she blows, plastic bag, box. We've seen that one. And then, and the instruction manual. We'll have a look at that in a moment or two. Just a quick look. A uh, couple of raw plugs with what looks like plated or stainless screws to put it on the wall, so you can screw it directly to the wall. It's interesting. Uh, where's the hanging loop then? There's that part. There's something else in the box which I have missed. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Maybe it's inside. We shall be. We'll see what these are for when the instructions arrive. But you've got a little clip-on brush at the back, presumably for <laughs> uh, if you can get it out of the holder. That is. It's stiff, boys. Oh, it's tight. Yeah, that's quite a struggle. I see you put it in there and you clean things out, I suppose. We'll see, shall we? So there's a little brush that goes on there. On-off switch. A hanging hook. And a nameplate. It's a bit rattly, but there you go. So again, 220, 240 volts, 50 hertz, indoor use only. Really made in Germany, or we're we just being asked to believe that. I wonder one if it is truly made in Germany. I think the Germans love the Chinese so much. Um, so yeah, we've got four screws holding it together. I'm guessing we've got a single fluorescent tube inside. Um, so your insect sees the. Uh, Whoa! Stay away from the light. I can't stay away from the light. Flies in, and gets zapped by those by the electrodes, which are presumably two uh, bifolar wound um, high voltage electrodes to electrocute your, um, electrocute your insect. All right, and yeah, there it is. So this bit looks like it clips off. Is that, is that removed for cleaning type thing? Yeah, a little drawer comes out, look. Oh, look, there's your bug. Inspection, so you can do some bug inspection. That's the catching tray for the actual bugs that come down. And again, there's a protective drill in here to stop you getting your fingers in. In the IEC 59095 uh, uh, safety directives and the related documents, there is a standard finger that must be more than, I think it's four millimeters diameter and more than 40 millimeters long. I can't quite remember, but the standard finger test is you poke this standard electrode and you shouldn't be able to contact any um, high, higher vol uh, voltages higher than 50 volts with your finger so it's, it's supposed to emulate a small child's finger so that looks about right but I must look that up and uh, familiarise myself with that I've done designs based on that safety spec or should I say designed to meet that safety spec but I really can't remember the actual details of the spec itself so let's whip these screws out shall we before we try it Ah, for goodness sake, we're kingdom for a screwdriver. 
four screws to come out. At the moment I can't see what you screw this to because uh, there's no chain or hook or anything else in the box it's just this and those two uh, maybe it's these ones here is it oh, I suppose hmm I suppose you could could you but if you screw that to the wall on this side you'd be um, the insects could only make an approach to the from the other direction. Oh, look at that in a minute. Tiny screws, look at those holding it together. Teeny weeny screws. Here she comes. Oh. So, nothing special about this. Uh, it's probably very, it's high styrene ABS, quite brittle. I think my other screw just fell out, didn't it? There it is. So have I got all four now? No. Now I have all four screws put back in. High styrene ABS. Again, Lidl. No recycling marks, which are a mandatory requirement. Cheapest chips. 7 99 too, too cheap. I'd rather spend 10 quid on it, to be honest, and have a much better quality recyclable uh, piece of kit. Should have the uh, recycling marks telling the recycling company when this is scrapped what the plastic is and so they can batch it up and match it and regrind it and use it to make other things not good so what have we got oh so what we have here is a capacitive choke really for that you've got the uh, dropping capacitors uh, to provide the current for the tube and we have a small suppression capacitor couple of 10 ohm resistors, some more capacitors crimped onto the aluminium wire that's going on there, a voltage generator which is a doubler circuit look you can see there and there I'll get this board out and we'll have a more detailed look and then a standard uh, 4 or 5 watt starter tube and we'll we'll fire it up and uh, we'll see what happens shall we right so let's have a bit more of a technical look at this thing so look, see what we've got in the plug. See what fuse they've fitted. Actually, it's not actually coming undone, I don't think. No, nothing happening on that. I think um, <laughs> I don't think it's even a screw. I think that's been hammered in by somebody. It's a pseudo screw stroke nail I can't get it up can't get it out of that screw that's the first time that's ever happened to me honest <laughs> oh dear oh dear this is where I make a hole in my hand I put some pressure on there put some pressure on the lid oh right The screw's coming out now, a bit of pressure to get it started. It had been over tightened and threaded off, so it's taken all the threads out of the hole here. So, what have we got? We've got a BS uh, three, 1362 fuse, which means it should be sand filled. I wonder if it is. And it's a, a 3 amp. There you go. Seaman 3 amp. <laughs> it's a Seaman fuse. Yeah, I'm guessing. Feels quite light, but probably okay. This plug here, look, the uh, crimped part hasn't been put into the connector, so it's half hanging out. Close up on that so you can see better. So not full marks for fitting the connector. In fact, look, look at that. It's not even in there. Bad work. Aldi plug person. So was this really made in Germany? So somebody in the Fatherland has uh, made an error. Vorsprung durch technique or not, as the case may be. 
that's not good. So immediately we have, look, the screw is screwed fully down and um, they've missed the target, which is no, no, no surprise is it for Jim's. Oh, they've tightened that down a bit as well. Where's those pliers gone? There we are. Yeah, so they've fallen down on the uh, electrical mains plug safety straight away. So let's just correct that. That's sloppy. Sloppy, sloppy. I joined a company when I was um, 24, and it was um, the first, my first um, foray into. I was a production manager, and it was a technical side of production, managing the technical side of production, and sorting out particular yield issues, you know, problems with assembly. My phone's ringing, but I have to wait. And um, yeah. I was there for a good few weeks and I couldn't understand why all these silly errors were being made by people. And then it occurred to me, surprisingly, and this was a, you know, a, a, an ISO related, uh, rated company, electronics company, um, 500 odd workers, and uh, it just occurred to me that half the bloody operators were blind, they'd never had an eye test. And the company had never assessed whether they could actually see properly. Of course, you know, if you haven't got 20-20 vision and you're trying to do stuff like this, you can't see what the hell you're doing. And, um, yeah, it was, a bit of a, it was a bit of a struggle to get people to fess up to the fact that they'd overlooked this and uh, to get people eye-tested for free because it was a requirement that uh, if your employees needed good eyesight for their job, then you should provide an eye test. You wouldn't necessarily provide the spectacles for them but you could if you're a kind employer provide the spectacles so that's uh now it's wired up properly we'll check it again yeah not good not good at all so let's plug it into the power meter into the yoko gawa there we are. So it's going through a power meter at the moment We'll give it 240 of Her Majesty's volts on the variac. Right, here we go. So turn her on. I'm assuming that this is not going to give out any hazardous ultraviolet from the from the tubey part. And uh, let's turn on contact. Oh, turn the power on to this the rig. It's probably a good idea. Hmm, well that's not a good start, is it? There it goes. Well that's a an odd startup routine. Oh no, hold on. And now it's gone off again. Well that's not a good sign. Did I just hit the switch? Oh, I just knocked the switch that time. Now it's running, so it had a bit of trouble getting going, which is a bit worrying, isn't it? You think one day after it's been going for a while. So if I turn the light off, you can see we have got a eerie buggy glow. Is it ultraviolet? We wonder. Let's have a look. Let's get the old photo radiometer on it and take a measurement. It's probably the best bet. Turn it on. Let that warm up. Yeah. So eerie blue glow and some voltage on those wires. I'm guessing it's going to be something like 720 to 800 volts on those two between each strand so it goes plus minus plus minus plus minus down the, the wire strands. The We're taking uh, it's curious the way that the power meter is making, the power meter is making that clicking noise which is strange. We're running on 240 volts exactly and we're taking 4.009 watts so it's a 4 watt not 4.7 it's absolutely this is an expensive power meter it's 4 watts so I'll take a picture of it 
so you can see the actual um, I'll inlay the power meter reading on the system on the video when I do it okay so we've got a nice blue thing let's let's go to um, this is our GLF we developed this with a it's a uh, our company Right, I'm going to do a measurement now. So we've got the spectral radiometer pointing towards the uh, UV tube or the near UV tube. So we're going to press measure. And there it is. There's the spectrum of what's coming out of the uh, UV. So it's near UV. It's, if I just zoom in, you can see it a little bit better. You've got uh, 350. So you've got the peak, one of the UV peaks. This is the one the insects will be going mad for, would be the 370, 380 peak, 380 nanometers. It goes, this is the same colour as woods glass or black light blue that they use in discos and clubs to make your skin look nice and brown because your reflectivity of your skin in near UV is very low so you look brown and all your white and um, uh, with fluorescent uh, washing powders and white clothes and white threads all glow in the dark in that nice colour but the actual illumination is pretty low and there you've got is just uh, really... Um, Royal blue will be about 440 here somewhere. So this is just a going to normal visible blue. Got a few peaks in the red and green. Or well, green, actually green and yellow. And then you're going up to 660 is um, deep red, which would be a rich ruby red colour, really deep red. And this is uh, near, near IR, so it's uh, it's um, not visible range really. And that's further, that's IR, that's kind of around the range up. Um, this is infrared remote control. Um, region of the spectrum, infrared, so yeah, near UV, so it is, it is near UV, there's nothing dangerous coming out of it, um, so it's just a normal um, UV tube, the same as you'd use in a fish tank for all the uh, Philips Grolux type tubes, alright, so the tube's working isn't it, so that's, uh, let's turn that off, so we're happy with the spectrum, we're confident that insects would like that quite a bit, and it's not harmful, so that's good. So the next thing to note is what voltage we've got on these things. And let's turn the lights back on so you can see a bit better. See what voltage we have on this jobby between the two wires that do the executing. Right, so my meter is set to 1000 volt range. Um, my probes are rated at 1000 volt, 1 kV. So if I just put one on there, and one on there, what do we get? Yeah, as I thought, it's a voltage double, so it's a rectified voltage doubler, and then it's doubled again, so we've got about 800 volts, 820 volts. Clearly there wouldn't be much current um, between the two wires, so the insect flies up and then he bridges two connections at 820 volts and gets electromecuted. So what have we got? Yeah, so really it's just this one of these capacitors around here provide the uh, the charge to zap your insect. Cable looks alright. It's two core cable. Um, yeah, so the startup was a bit poor, wasn't it? I'll just show you this tube. It's quite interesting what this does. Because normally you would have a starter bulb like this working in conjunction with a uh, an inductor to give you what you wanted. Let's move that out of the way. Let's bend that way. So there you can see the, uh, the starter tube and if I turn the power on you can see what happens. Nothing at all. Dun, dun, dun. Hold on a minute. Let's see if I've got the switch switched on. No, I'd switch it off. Talk amongst yourselves as usual. Put it back in the frame and contact. So it's starting up actually, it's starting up a lot better than when I first got it. When I first got it, it had a real struggle. I wondered whether it was actually going to go or not. But this time, you get the gas discharge in there and then when this, the tube strikes up, then there's not enough voltage across this uh, discharge starter bulb to actually make it work. There's the bulb again, I'll just do it once more so you can see. If I reduce the supply voltage, you might get a better show, to be honest. 
Okay, so that was uh, 200 volts. Let's turn it down a bit more. There you can see. So that's the action. You can see there's a glow, and that will be conducting through the uh, this gas discharge tube to the heaters at the end of each tube. So at the end of each tube, there's a heater. You can see it just struck up then. And the current flows through this circuit here, through the gas, through the heaters, to heat the, the um, emitters at the end of the tube. At the end of this tube, there's a heated coil in there. Just in that part there, there's a heated coil. You can see that bar moving along. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I can see that, actually. I thought it was going to be a function of the actual um, shutter speed of the camera, but it's not. I can see that by naked eye. Interesting. We're running at uh, something like 170 volts. Anyway, so the uh, this strikes up, conducts um, the heat in the heating circuit across these two wires. So there's a heated coil at each end, covered in probably thorium, which is a um, when heated it was used in valves and other thermionic thermionic emitters. So when you heat the thorium, you get a a, a cloud of electrons uh, generated at the surface, and of course because there's an electrostatic uh, potential across the tube, they drift and ionize the tube and then you get the thing lighting up. So, yeah, let's just do that once more. I'm going to use it a little bit more. So it's actually striking up down at um, around about 120 volts. So let's go back onto the tube. And you can see what's happening here. You've got a dull glow at the ends. It's going to come. Is she going to do it? So if I up the voltage slightly, They are, and then it struck. Once it's struck, the uh, the tube goes out. All right, so uh, there you have it. Um, electronics and the actual build quality of the unit. It doesn't look too bad actually. All the screws are in place. It's a T54 watt tube. Um, there is a fuse down there, look, in the unit, so they've actually bothered to put a fuse in, if you can see down in that area there. That bit down there is a fuse, so it's actually got proper cartridge, a 20mm cartridge fuse and holder, so for the money, it's pretty incredible really. I'd be amazed if it's made in Germany, but I, I can, if anyone knows whether this stuff is actually made in Germany or whether they're just badging it to give it a German shine, a polish, before they ship it out and it comes from China, I'd love to know because it's really interesting if they can make these in Germany for this price, it means that Europe can manufacture and we can compete with these very far off countries where pollution is released into the atmosphere just to service our markets while we're patting ourselves on our back for how eco-friendly we are. I could sketch out the schematic but it's a simple um, voltage doubler I think. It's a yeah, voltage doubler. 240 mains, halfway rectified and then doubled and that's what you get. So a couple of resistors in the in the uh, heater circuit up here in the uh, striking circuit and then some capacitor droppers. Clearly there's no room for an inductor so the job of these capacitors is just to buy, um, provide a more or less loss free impedance between the mains and the tube so it's actually like an active um, power limiter if you like it's an impedance, a reactive impedance so it gives an awful power factor but otherwise fine so that's the you know, I'll put it back together, you don't need to see me doing that so just put it to one side over there I'll get a shock off it, turn it off and then we'll have a quick gawk at the instructions and see what's in there if we can find them what did I do with them? Yeah, so there's there's the diagram of um those screws which are supposed to go in through this back panel, these two apertures in the back panel there, like so, I'll just demonstrate that. I think if you hang it by the hook you're much better off because then in insects can come in from both sides. If you, stink, if you put that up against the wall then the, you know, you're going to 
limit the exposure so effectively I suppose it might only be half as uh, half as effective so that goes in there like that it would be much better off providing cheese head screws rather than the um, the countersunk because the countersunk is going to pull on the plastic and stress the plastic as well so a cheese head screw would have been the right thing to supply but you know, picking, splitting hairs again um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and hang mine up in my sh workshop by the hook then they can fly in from both sides and make a controlled approach give me the light um, and then there's the brush and I won't bother reading this out but if you can freeze frame and have a look if you want to see what this is all about you can have a look yourselves you should be able to read that yeah that's a bit worrying death and accidents so yeah it's only supposed to kill insects I thought safety information It says never open on the, on the electrical equipment, oh dear. Or insert any objects, of course. Uh, you don't want to get zapped. Danger of explosion. Okay, so yeah, it generates heat because of, you know, you've got a gas leak and a fly comes buzzing into your kitchen. <laughs> Just flies in, the, flies in your insecticide, there's a spark and then boom. Um, it blows your house up. Yeah. Cleaning and care, so turn it off when you clean it and so on. Uh, and then it goes into another foreign language warranty. Yeah, so that's where it is. I mean, it's, uh, it's there. You can have a look at that. You freeze frame it. Um, what I have got outside is a, uh, a water barrel with lots of mosquitoes emanating from it. And today and tomorrow are going to be very hot and there'll be a lot of intense mosquito activity out there and so most people are actually interested in whether it kills mosquitoes whether it's a so I'm going to hang it up outside by the water butt overnight and see how many mosquitoes we can collect just out of sheer interest so if you're interested in seeing what <laughs> mosquitoes we can get then uh, just look for part two of this video it'll be up tomorrow night probably or probably um, day after after a couple of days and uh, we'll have a look and see just how many mosquitoes are attracted and if there's anything else interesting I'll post another one after that but there's this part one video and then the follow-up if you like this video and want to see more of this type of thing just click the subscribe button down there and leave a like if you liked it that'd be nice and also if you hit the uh, not notification bell then if any more come up on this uh, series then you'll get a notification so thanks for watching and uh, yeah go and get yours now it is now uh, 23rd of June and they're on sale in Lidl. Looks alright for the money, you know, bigger than I thought. Anyway, good luck, have a good summer.